three mid-range at the rim and gets to the free throw line at a high rate. What an assignment to draw. The bucket getter, the freshman from Virginia, the top scoring freshman in the country. This one will be up and down. High scoring should be a fun one. And we're glad you're with us tonight, Alabama. And the Crimson, LSU in the home white. Excellent officiating crew. It's Tony Green, Terry Oglesby, and Lee Castle. Three seniors in that Alabama starting lineup. Jaden Shackelford, who's a sophomore, he plays like a senior, gives it away on possession number one. And there he is, Cameron Thomas to the LSU starting five. Five-star freshman, Dan, as you said, goes for 22 a game. It's Mamwani Wilkinson with the first look. And that three is off the mark. There's Petty. Right on cue. That three is good. And how quick did they get that ball up the court at? After a miss, shot up in five seconds. This is one of the fastest teams, third in the country in terms of pace. And just keep an eye on it. Defensive rebound to transition to shot on the other end. Alabama, you're right, one of the fastest in transition. A tough assignment for LSU defensively tonight. There's Cam Thomas. Darius Dees with the follow. And that's what LSU wants to do to you, especially in the offensive glass. They attack you and are relentless. Jaden Shackelford on this side. Alabama, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. It'll make 10 per game, and that is the task for LSU, defending the three, defending the red-hot tide in transition. Trenton Watford had it swiped away by Josh Primo after the miss. Freshman from Toronto brings it up. And Dave, this one should be fun. These two teams are one and two at the top of the league. A little bit of a heavyweight bout, if you will, in Baton Rouge tonight. And there's Petty with his second. Well, Will Wade's got to be upset because rule number one on the defensive game plan was no penetration and kick. And that time, Shackleford got in the paint, found a shooter. Petty was waiting on him. That is what Alabama does offensively. Get into the paint. Either put it up or kick. Javante Smart picks up the dribble. Watford in the traffic and banks it in. Tough back. And he's just going to bully you down low, find his way into the paint, put it off the glass. It was a great week for both of these teams. Alabama lengthened its win streak to seven in a row. LSU has won four in a row. And Judd Petty has nailed three triples in a row. Oh, my. Yeah, we had Alabama last week. You asked Coach Oates. You said, hey, is he a guy that you know if he makes his first one or two, it's going to be a good night? He said, absolutely. When this guy sees that first one go in, the rim is an ocean. We're seeing it now early in this one. Now, if you thought he couldn't top the performance from Saturday when he broke the program's all-time three-point record, he's trying to one-up himself. Here's another. Got it again! Four for four. From beyond the arc to start. Alabama just drowning LSU with the threes. You know, Kevin, we don't always pick the right guy to feature in the open, but I think we got this one right. <laughs> John Betty picking up where he left off, and his confidence has just skyrocketed in his shot selection under Nate Oates. Five for five. It's Primo with a three. What you do, that's inexcusable, though. I mean, you're LSU, that's a dead ball. Get back, get matched up. I'm not sure they knew what defense they were in. Yeah, I said heavyweight bout. LSU's on the canvas right now. We're going to get up. Days had that shot partially blocked. And then Days follows the miss with a foul on Reese. Nate Oates' team is one of the hottest teams in the country. They've won 7-0. Uh, seven straight, I should say. There's 6-0 in league play for the first time in 34 years. Off to another fine start this evening. Yeah, fine is the understatement of the night. <laughs> this is as good of a start you could ask for. Six triples in the first four minutes. I've never seen anything like this. Never. To start a game, six threes in the first four minutes. Just one miss. That was Jaden Shackelford's in the opening minute. He's the odd man out right now. 
Traveling violation. Alabama could not have asked for a better start. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Just off the bounce, not bad defense, just better offense. And then this is the penetrate kick, however you want it. Then he's going to say, okay, who else wants some? Trenton Wofford, come on out here. You give it a shot and then transition. If you're not going to pick me up in transition, it's over. He walks off to the corner on that one. The bench is hype. Primo comes in and hits two straight threes as well. And LSU's trying to figure out what the heck just happened as they found themselves now down 20-4 to four with only five minutes into this ballgame. With Reese with the latest basket in a blink of an eye. And Alabama is 7 of 8 for the field. Six triples. Cameron Thomas is trying to stop the bleeding. And was that last touch by Shackelford? It was. So a new 20-second shot clock for LSU. And Dane, I've got a general sense of some things that were probably said in that will wait huddle but if you're a player that just experienced that what's going Go ahead and repeat them right for us so you can get fired <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean trust me i'm sure the message was sent but they got to make sure they don't try to score their way back in the game because cam thomas is certainly capable of that but they got to figure out hey let our defense lead the offense because if we try to get a shootout with alabama we're going to lose his fifth three john petty already with 15 points and what's interesting, Kevin, is yes, LSU defends the three well percentage-wise, but they're one of the worst in the country in terms of how many three-point field goal attempts they allow. Yes, that's okay when you're playing teams that can't shoot as well as Alabama, but right now, Alabama is very comfortable with the looks they're getting on the offensive end. No way now in his fourth season at LSU trying to figure out, as you said, how to get his team back into this one. He's led LSU to back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. They were likely headed to their second straight NCAA tournament last year at the tournament they played. And there's Thomas with his first bucket. Started 0 of 3, and it was the follow-up. Yeah, that's tough. There's not many people in the country, much less freshmen, that give you that shimmy turnaround mid-range game. Elite score. Herb Jones is fouled on the way in. Now, during LSU's four-game win streak, a couple times it has dug itself out of some deep holes. Now, this is no question the deepest, but it's pretty to comebacks. It's done that a number of times already this year. And Alabama is a team that you have to prepare Davis. for. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to have a lot of runs because they're three, so they can get hot. Now, this is one of the best runs they've had all season. But the key to this year's Alabama team is they don't just play defense when their scoring is going well. I mean, even if they aren't shooting the ball well, they are defending at a high level. And that's what's made this Alabama team a top 25, sweet 16 potential type team. Yes, the balance offensively, but even more so, it's the fact that they're winning tough games. And they, they've got their hard hat, as Nate Oates likes to say, and, and their identities on the defensive end as well. Started four and three, have won seven straight. Another giveaway. Petty took it away from Gaines. That's the third LSU turnover. Yeah. Herb Jones with the left hand scores it off the window. And another timeout. 21 point lead for Alabama. Timeout at Baton Rouge. Get, in, uh, get back in this game. It's LSU. It's the highest scoring offensive attack in the SEC, shooting 49% from the field as a team. Uh, Dean. Right now, what's a matchup you're keeping your eye on as LSU tries to get back in this one? Well, the do-it-all guy for Alabama has been Herb Jones. And early in this game, he's had the assignment on Trenton Watford. He's fronting the post. He's bothering LSU on that previous possession before the timeout. Herb Jones defends the post, then brings it up in transition like a point guard for a layup.
Javon Quinterly, fresh into the game, knocks it down. It's going to be tough to play zone against this three-point shooting team of Alabama. I know Will Wade likes to mix it up, but they might have to go man-to-man -man and get back to their switching personnel. This is an incredible start. Alabama eight threes already on nine attempts. Thomas lofts it to Watford, out of bounds. As strangely lopsided as you can get. So this is the Alabama way, right? Nate Oates coming over from Alabama, uh, from Buffalo in his second season as the head man. His offense is NBA-like. It's spread floor. It's balanced. And you take a lot of threes. Eight of nine from deep. Four of four elsewhere. Corner. Keon Ellis. No. The follow slam for Josh LeBlanc. See if that can give LSU a spark. Again, they love to attack the rim offensively. That can lead to transition defense problems. But right now, they, they've got to find some type of way to stop the bleeding. There is a little bit of a crowd, too, inside the American show. Ellis missed that finger roll. They follow? No. Got about 2,500 fans or so. This has been a fortress of of late for LSU. It has not lost at home yet. Down 20 in the first eight minutes. Herb Jones to the line. Herb Jones is so good. And Nate Oates told us he's he, not only a good on-ball defender, but also likes to play some of that free safety, you know, type spot. And he's just got such a high IQ. And here's the free safety coming in to pick it off. And then a lot of guys would fear Trenton Watford, but not one of his best friends out of Alabama. Played on the Alabama Challenge AAU team together. Herb Jones going right at his buddy. And, and remember, he chose LSU over Alabama. Birmingham native. Uh, just how valuable is this guy, Herb Jones, for Nate Oates? Uh, you, you really can't put it into words. I mean, he, he's their leader, their captain. Uh, he can defend so many positions. They're just better on the court with him. And now that he's a threat from the outside, he worked on his perimeter shot. Still not a high-volume shooter, but teams have to respect that now. That's helped their offense. But he's he's had everybody's respect since his freshman year. It's not like he learned how to compete and be a captain. He was a leader the moment he got to Tuscaloosa. Watford's bucket has it back to a 20-point game. Alabama turns it over for the second time. 32 and counting. This tied offense with eight threes early on. Tied the Maravich Center at Baton Rouge. These two teams, one and two, atop the SEC. All eyes have been on Alabama the last couple of weeks. Dane, they're up 20. Their last two games, wins last week against Arkansas and Kentucky, were by a grand total of 51. And, and then you look at the way they beat Tennessee, expose them. Tennessee takes a tough loss today at Florida. And, you know, look, this, this big lead still has to hold up throughout the course of the game. It's not over, but Alabama has clearly separated themselves in the SEC thus far. It is worth pointing out Alabama is an ice-cold 0 for its last one from deep. Well, they're hitting 8 of its first 9. Yep, Alabama back. In the AP Top 25 for the first time in three years. This is its highest ranking in nine years. Not since 2007 has it been ranked this late in a season. And there's just momentum right now that that second statistic sheds some light on. Quinterly a deep three and he drains it. That's now the ninth triple. Right now there is no signs that the Tide are going to slow down from deep. Yeah, you know, what's interesting, too, and speaking with LSU and Coach Wade before the game, yes, they knew Alabama could shoot the three really well, but they were so concerned also about how well they attack the rim and score at the basket. And so you see a play like that where Watford's given up some room on the quicker Quinterly, but, you know, I mean, these guys are feeling it so much right now that forget the paint touches. They're just jacking from deep and hitting everything. Yeah, Dane, that's a good point. A bunch of these threes, if not most of them, in transition as well. 
nothing in the set where a player is able to probe the paint. That's Rojas, by the way, the junior from Jamestown, New York. And he got clocked to the face. Bit of a bloody nose right now. This may have been a valiant effort here. Look at all the bodies around Watford. I mean, they're making his catches tough, and then when he puts it on the deck, they're bringing extra defenders and the crowd around him, not letting him have any clean looks. And Rojas doing a nice job filling in. Uh, again, Alabama without one of their you know, key pieces. The Yale transfer, Jordan Bruner, who's been so good for them. A pick-and-pop five, terrific passer. He's out with a meniscus injury, and they have not missed a beat. They heard it in that win against Kentucky inside Rupp Arena last week. And you're right, we'll be absent for a while. Thomas with a clear path to the lane. Poor defense. That 25 point game last time out against uh, uh, South Carolina. Near turnover. Ball still three. Watford. Fourth Alabama giveaway. Thomas bumped. The third team foul on the tie. And if you're Nate Oates, here's what's frustrating about that last possession is Quinterly trailed that screen on Thomas and allows Thomas to get a wide open layup. It doesn't look like much, but for a team that's good offensively, not being able to get in a rhythm, especially the leading scorer in the SEC, Cam Thomas, to let him get that first one uncontested and start to establish some rhythm is a big deal. You can't take any possessions off. So remember on Thursday, Arizona battles Arizona State. Tip is at 9 Eastern. It's on ESPN, also on the app. That's the first of back-to-back. -back. Those two will square off again on Monday. They'll do a little home-and-home. -home. Arizona State fighting the COVID bug. They only had eight guys available in their last timeout. Trying to find a way to close out games. At least they got Remy Martin back in the line. Well, Nate Oates' former boss, Bobby Hurley, trying to turn things around. You're right. So here's Thomas again. And quickly with six points. You mentioned it before. LSU can't just try to shoot its way back in this game. It's got to stick with the offensive plan. And Thomas can score at all three levels. Herb Jones. Finds clearly. One bounce. And Quinterly sticks it. He's now three of three from deep. Thomas Strong. That was Shackleford with the assist on the prior possession. Herb Jones adjusting and lays it in. And we take those long unexpected shots like Cam Thomas does and you got four guys crashing well guess what long rebound and Alabama's sprinting to the other end no surprise LSU gives up the transition bucket this is astonishing the lead remains a vast one 24 point advantage for the red hot crimson tie LeBlanc with his second bucket Dane Alabama has hit 10 threes Reese try to keep it alive. LeBlanc secures it. And it's just an incredible start. 10 of 13 from deep. Yeah, but we've had Alabama a couple of times. Uh, something I applaud them for is they don't really play the scoreboard. They keep 100% effort. And right now, more important than ever, because if they start getting comfortable and just playing street ball and jacking too many early threes that are contested, LSU is good enough to close the gap. LSU shooting 48% from the field. Just can't keep up with the barrage. And Penny's rampage continues. Just a beautiful split of the trap by Herb Jones. Head up. You talked about his value. Well, that's it right there. A guy that can guard your team center and come down and play point guard for his team. Unbelievable. Thomas lost it. Unreal. John Petty, six of six from deep. Hurt. 
Jones just does it all for the Crimson Tide. Trails the play, finishes like a big man, but then on the other end, guess what? I can run a little point guard, split your trap, find my man. Who's got the hot hand? John Petty. On fire. <laughs> I could not have said it better myself, Dallin. Well done. Yeah, so so that means John Petty has more threes than Villanova does have as a team. Petty is six of six from deep. But he has played 10 minutes, so, you know, you'd expect that type of production. <laughs> I mean, Dane, this is an astonishing start. By the way, that's the fifth Alabama turnover. 11 triples for the tie. You know, you used to tee up Chris Lofton at Tennessee back in the day. You know, when a player gets in that rhythm, what does this feel like? I tell you from personal experience, I can tell you what it feels like to be a teammate of the guy that's going off. <laughs> Chris was a no leave guy. I was a, I was a leave alone guy, but it, it, it does. It brings the energy up. You've seen the bench for Alabama. When Petty gets hot, the whole team feels like they're hot. They got the opponent on the ropes, and it is it is, it is a contagious energy. Oh. Herb Jones scores it again. The double figures for the eleventh time. I mean, a, 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 LSU. Anything it does offensively. It's just matched on the other end. Gaines can't answer. Petty, corner. That's good. The, the oh story is goodness. John Petty. Seven the story is John seven. Petty, but I tell you, Shackleford, that's the next level in his game. And Shackleford typically would go in there and force the tough two. Now he's learning to dribble with his head up, spray it, find Petty. But... You know, Petty's sharing the love a little bit, too, and Herb Jones just a slasher. Now that he's a little bit of a threat from the perimeter, people respect that opening up the drive for him. And then again, the spray out, as Nate Oates likes to call it. Beautiful find by Shackelford, and man, Petty, I mean, he, he is feeling it. He's in a zone. I know he's had 10-plus threes in the game before, but I don't know that he's ever last week. Coach Oates has talked about hoping his team would be mature enough. You know, when they went on the road at Kentucky, would they be mature enough to handle success? I think we're seeing right now, this is a hungry team that has not gotten comfortable or cocky at all with the national ranking and the attention. They are happy having the target on their back, playing their game no matter who it is. Highest ranking in nine years for Alabama. LSU hasn't performed poorly on this end of the floor either, shooting 47%. Just can't keep up with the barrage of threes. Foul on the Thomas drop. So the 10th annual We Back Pat Week continues Thursday. Number three, UConn in Knoxville to take on the 25th ranked Lady Vols. Thursday at 7 Eastern. It's on ESPN, also on the app. Last time UConn visited Knoxville 15 years ago was an excellent game. They're back there again. It should be a good one. Talk about what that did for the women's game. I, I can remember when people used to argue, hey, is it is it bad for the game as good as Tennessee and UConn are? And absolutely not. It raised the standard for women's basketball that has resulted in the parity you see today. Missed the step back. Off Alabama. LSU will keep it. Alabama approaching 50. With 5.25 to go in the first half. Smart for three. As Javante Smart's first bucket. The junior from Baton Rouge. Look at the disparity. 12 threes for Bama. One for the home team. Now it's Shackleford going to work. Boy, he's a crafty scorer. Crafty is the right word. I mean, that time he gets in there. If the defense did not come over to help and force him to kick it out. Ambidextrous shows his right hand. Thomas heading to the line. Kevin, this will be the first trip to the free throw line for LSU, which is uncharacteristic, especially for Cam Thomas, who gets there 
over seven times a game on average, connecting on 90% of those. And so, you know, this is one of those areas that I know will be an emphasis in the second half is how does LSU, if I'm Will Wade, how can we pound it inside, try to extend this game, get to the free throw line, and try to ugly this game up a little bit instead of the finesse fast place we're seeing Alabama have. Thomas now with eight. I just got a little uh, loosness. Country. You notice the, the loose <laughs> rim there? I'm afraid of what's going to happen if Alabama gets that rim in the second half. <laughs> if you get the friendly roll in the second half, this could be a 150-point game. Well, the season high for Bama is 15 threes made. They're at 12. And Dane is saying on the, on the unfriendly rim they're doing this. Not again. Rojas trying for the offensive rebound. Balances to Jalen Cook. This is Sharif O'Neal. First minutes. This is December 26th. Shaquille Sun. Smart? No. Quinterly's three of three from deep. Rojas trying to call time. Jump ball. Welcome back to Sharif O'Neal. LSU basketball when we come back. <laughs> we going sizzling. <laughs> I was nine years looked. old when my, when my mom went out of town and my dad took me at nine years old to the R-rated white men can't jump. Billy Hoyle in the zone. No, no, no. no. It's looked too easy for John <laughs> Petty. <laughs> he is seven of eight from deep. Bama as a team has 12. You know, I know, Dane, you said when you used to play NBA Jam as a kid, you used to go with the Bulls, but shoot, that's because... Alabama wasn't an option. There's no John Petty in that game back then. Yeah, the evolution of NBA Jam started in the arcade, and, and you had to have a quarter if you wanted to play the second quarter and another quarter for the third quarter, and the clock was ticking down. You better get that quarter quick. And then once it came out on Sega Genesis, it was, it was over. It was over. Yeah. The economy of the arcade room went down. Herb Jones pounces on a loose basketball. Sixth Bama turnover. Thomas, the step through. A fight. Jones saves it. He's trying to bounce it off an out an LSU player. And instead, Shackelford scores a transition. But this is what's so impressive to me. Right now. Sorry, Kevin. What's so impressive to me about this Alabama team is if you didn't look at the scoreboard, you would say, okay, Alabama must be the team that's down 25, the way they're hustling, trying to fight back, winning 50-50 balls. But it's not. They're playing this hard with the lead. That shows you the maturity that Coach Nate Oates has been looking for. Now, Will Wade outlined that to us, that this is a dangerous team because they have just been pedal to the metal, have been running opponents out of the gym. Shackelford had that one blocked by Watford. And if you're LSU, the halftime break is a welcome one. Jones bumps smart. And you were just talking about the effort, right? So this is what Nate Oates has brought Alabama. They tap blue collar points. You see the scale, uh, the numbered system here: four points for a charge, for example, two for a floor dive, one point five for an offensive rebound. You get the hard hat award for the player with the most at the end of each game. No surprise, Herb Jones. Leads the yeah, way in that if, category. If the score stays like this and the walk-ons get some opportunity, if I'm a walk-on, I'm coming in diving like 10 times <laughs> the last two minutes. I'm going to try to beat Herb Jones one time and one time only. What an upset to, to take the hard hat crowd. Now, this is just a, you know, what Oates has installed here. It's a fun system. There is a 
on one hand the blue collar attitude you must bring to the table if you play for them but then also the exciting fast pace nba like space floor offense as well it's kind of the best of both worlds and many times if you score this much you play at the pace that they do the third fastest in the country you know right at 14 seconds per possession that typically that you relate that to a finesse style team but they've got the balance that you just mentioned and we're seeing it now there, there's a foul there on alex reese but you know, this guy look how much he's competing he's taking it personal he wants to keep it out of watford's hands an alabama kid that chose lsu and they take it personal and, and they, they fight on every possession Second foul on Reese. He takes a seat. One and one for LSU. By the way, it's not that Watford had had success by leaving Alabama. I think Alabama fans just wish he was wearing the crimson because uh, preseason SEC player of the year pick number two in white. They just have not allowed him to have very many easy touches in this one. Uh, he's just been totally overshadowed by the three-point barrage of Alabama. And Watford scores uh, close to 19 a game. He is skilled inside and out, Dan. He's got some post moves. He can step out and hit the three. And it's not like he's played poorly tonight. This would be his 10th point. Totally overshadowed. One against two. And the gap right now between one and two is vast. A 23-point advantage for Alabama. And, Dane, they're kind of doing it with the spotlight on them. This is one of the more exciting teams to enter the top 25. Alabama hasn't had a spotlight like this on it in quite a while. And what do they do in game one since being ranked? They hit 12 threes in the opening half. A technical has been assessed. And it's on John Petty. So this goes back to what you were talking about. I take it back, Dean. Not a technical, a delay of game warning against Alabama. Primo in the corner. That's good. It's 13 triples and counting. You got to be able to guard the ball. Penetration kills. That's just a drive, draw, dish. Smart. Not that time. Shackleford breaking down Watford. Quinterly. Now it's a primo. Lines it up. Back to back threes. 14 for, from deep for the tie. Unreal. And Dane, you can dust off the record book. The, the SEC record for threes in a game is 22. And that record's on red alert. Not this safe. is unbelievable. Yeah, this is unbelievable to double up LSU in the first half with the barrage of the first time in 15 years And again, and they're not just doing it. They're not sneaking away. Pardon me, Dave, but they're they are pounding some of these teams Yeah, and Auburn the only one to really keep it close in those games uh, Alabama handled it wire to wire and most of these opponents and Here they are trying to put up 60 in the first half Quinterly got it blocked. Watford very skilled around the rim. Gaines had that one pinned off the backboard. Here comes the free train again. Quinterly switching to the left hand. It's that jelly fam. Quinterly. <laughs> Smart buries the three, but a cool 60 for Alabama. Season high for points and a half. Dane, they went 74% from deep, 14 threes.
Yeah, LSU is going to get this one off. That looks like a deep one. That's plenty of range for comfort for Javante Smart. They're going to need a lot more of that in the second half. See if LSU can't calm down and make a game of this. I have no idea what the second half has in store. It'll be exciting. Now to our Bristol studio. Here's Dallin and Jordan. Love. And then Herb Jones continuing to do it all. Even when he's not the star of the game, he's got his fingerprints all over it. And Shackleford, who's one of the most dynamic scorers in the league, really. Not having to do much on a night like tonight, given the three-point shooting prowess led by that man, John Petty. Just relentless. Alabama shot 66% from the field in the first half, 74% from deep. John Petty, three triples away from matching his career high of 10, which he has done twice. And it's pretty incredible. The numbers are, they're, they're all eye-popping today. Rises again. That's his second miss, but Alex Reese follows it. So even when you get a stop from deep or a miss, Alabama's there to stretch the lead back to 30. Reese does a really nice job, this Alabama team. A very unselfish senior who deferred and said, hey, Jordan Bruner's playing great when he was not injured. I'll come off the bench for you. He and Bruner, the transfer from Yale, have really developed a good relationship that has only helped solidify that five spot together. Now, even with Bruner out, Alabama not missing a beat. Good ball movement there. Milwaukee Wilkinson, who's always a high percentage Shoots at a high percentage clip. Converts his first basket. In the corner. Book it. Primo. Don't forget about me. He's 5 of 5 from deep. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Nobody's even paying attention to that, right? <laughs> I mean, just, just a cool 5 for 5. You know, and he can get hot as well. They don't win that Auburn game, and they're not number 18 in the country without Primo's hot start against the Auburn Tigers on the road. You know, I, I wonder what your perspective would be on this. Nice slip, and Wilkinson has another two-hand stuff. You know, some of the LSU players, I know Will, Roy, uh, Will Wade's voice, of course, probably dominated that locker room, but, you know, from the player perspective, some of the veterans, you know, what do you expect in terms of their voice in the locker room in a game like this? There's Primo again. Well, whatever was said hadn't really worked. You give up two offensive rebounds and a wide open three. It, 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 you know, it's got to start on the defensive end, and they're just lost right now defensively. Um, like, that's a really nice take and a design drive on the right side there for, for Cam Thomas. But this is an LSU team that takes a lot of my turn shots, but they're going to have to share the ball if they're going to get back into it. And here's Alex Reese crashing the glass, keeping the momentum much like he did at Kentucky. And then here we are again with Primo deciding to crash the glass for two. And man, when we talked to Coach Wade earlier in the uh, in the day, Kevin, we, we talked about, hey, can you send as many guys to the glass knowing how fast Alabama is? He said, no, we, we have to. In a game like this against this opponent, you have to get multiple efforts. I'm not sure they're getting the single effort he's looking for, much less a multiple one. So it, it's gut check time. And as Jordan Cornette said, you can't look at the scoreboard. It's about pride at this point. 29-point advantage. That's Primo's first miss. Remember, Alabama was up by double digits less than five minutes into the game. And the lead has just grown and grown and grown since. Thomas's three has it back to 26. Well, and they finally get a fast break point down 17 to 3 in that category and that all starts with getting stops Jones with the response That's Herb Jones's first shot from deep and That's why he's an NBA player now. They love everything else he can do, but when he added that to his game It's over Here he is on the break Petty hesitated, no problem. I love it. The hesitation, like, oh, you're, you're not gonna put a hand up on me? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not like I don't have seven threes, but I'll make it eight. Well, new season high. He scored 39 in a game last year. That was the game in which he hit 10 threes. 
So he's done this before. Javante Smart starting to get going here in the second half. It's it, you just can't keep up with this offensive attack. That's the problem. And it's not like Alabama's doing this against bad defensive teams. Like LSU has been pretty good defensively. Tennessee is known for their great defensive team, and Alabama exposed them off the dribble. They got five guys that can pass, dribble, shoot. Just the way Coach Oates wanted this program to be, really, just after his uh, Detroit run was high school days. I mean, that was the system he had there, and it's followed him in a successful way everywhere he's been. Primo, Jones trailing, lays it up and in. 31-point advantage for the red-hot Crimson Tide. Days misfires. I think, Coach Wade, they're, they're going to have to have more set plays on the offensive end. If they start playing at the same pace as Alabama, something that's already ugly is going to get uglier. Shackleford with the handles. Primo wide open. Watch Alabama. And look, they're having fun playing. Yeah, they're they're having fun tonight because of the score and how well they're shooting. But that's their style of play. I mean, this is symbolic of their system and how hard they play and play together. Eighteen threes and counting. Josh Primo has hit six of them. Don't forget about this guy. Yeah, they've got some veterans, but now they got the freshman five star who's saying, wait a minute, don't forget about me. Cash money. Ranks as an assistant to Bobby Hurley up at Buffalo. A couple years after getting hired, he took over as the head man. Led the Bulls to three NCAA tournaments in four years. And then the two-time Mac coach of the year met the icon himself when he got hired by Alabama back in March of 2019. You know, Dan, I would I would say the early returns after a solid season a year ago in his first season at Tuscaloosa, the early returns suggest nice hire. He has got Alabama playing an exciting style of basketball. They shoot, they run, and they play hard. And this team is rolling 6-0 in SEC play. Is its best start to league play in 34 years. But, Kevin, they defend, too. And that's the biggest difference from this year to last year is they were so fragile from a toughness standpoint that when Herb Jones was not on the court, either with foul trouble or injury, they couldn't close out games. But here they are now, and they're holding a team in LSU that averages you know, over 80 a game to what you're seeing now. And they don't allow their offense to dictate their defensive intensity. And a lot of people had high hopes for last year's team because the covered what bear when NATOs came in. But they just lack that that edge to them. And with a couple personnel changes and a year under their belts to establish their culture, we're seeing the quick return. He has paid his dues, hasn't he? Spent nine years as a head coach of Romulus High in Detroit before Bobby Hurley hired him as an assistant at Buffalo. Yeah, he, he spent a little time with with our friends Robbie Hummel and and Jeff Goodman over the weekend after the big win against Arkansas. He was detailing his fundraising efforts as well as a high school math teacher slash cross country slash basketball coach. Had to fundraise for the program, so you now he started selling Capri Sun and Flaming Hot Cheetos to the students and the student body. And <laughs> that was how we got the, the fundraising budget up a bit. Until until the principals were like, hey, you got to cut it out. Like, they're, everybody's late for class because in between <laughs> classes, they're all going to Coach Eight's, Coach Oates' room to spend two bucks on Capri Suns and Flaming Cheetos. So, yeah, it was a great podcast. All Alabama, 32 point lead. And look at this score 78 to 46. Alabama pulled ahead by 11. 
three minutes and 23 seconds into the game. Uh, and LSU has been staggering since. And that's the most impressive part to me is how Alabama has not taken their foot off the gas. And they've continued to play as if they're the team that's losing, trying to fight back and scratch and claw. And that's why you're going to see them 7-0 atop of the SEC. And forget how many games they're, they're leading by in the SEC. The, the, on the eye test, they're leading by a ton right now. Yes, they will, because the two times, uh, the two teams parted, that would be right behind them. Tennessee just lost its second conference game earlier today. This would be LSU second, and Alabama would have a win over both of those programs. Quinterly with his fourth three. So, Dane, 19 and counting. I mean, it's worth pointing out now, the NCAA record in a game is 28. While they have shot 34% as a team at this point this season, today it's been just relentless 66% from downtown. They're almost doubling up the second best offense in, in lead play. Again, you, you see John Petty, your senior leader, doesn't have much reason to die for other than play your hardest. I mean, they, they got the lead. There he is flying into the basket underneath the goal. That, that's the type of effort you want to see. And certainly looking for that hard hat award from Coach Nate Oates. Coach was so complimentary. Forget about his shooting stroke. What did he say earlier? He said, Petty, I, I tell you, he's just so locked in mentally right now. To a level I haven't seen before, the senior from Huntsville unequivocally played the best basketball of his career. And I think it's been baby steps for him, really. I mean, one of the biggest things I've seen is just he's got a better handle with the ball. For three straight years, he had a negative assist to turnover ratio. Now it's positive. And it's going to be easy to have a positive assist turnover ratio when you've got shooters all over the court like Quinterly. It's unreal. 23s, 20 out of 30. Let's see what they do this time the glass you know Shackelford makes it look so easy when he gets to the rim the sophomore from Hesperia California Kevin I don't think it's far-fetched to say every player on LSU right now if you ask them what's the worst they've ever been beaten in their entire career since starting at Little League this is probably the worst they've ever been beat down before what the Alabama team is doing today a little bit playing a bit of zone Illinois rolling past Penn State let's get back to our game which has become quite an impressive blowout Kevin and I think you, you deserve credit some of these fans if you're sticking around to the end of this one 40 point lead for Alabama 23 pointers and counting for the red hot Crimson Tide Saturday, it's a top 20 battle on the SEC Network. Missouri won earlier tonight against South Carolina, faces Tennessee. You got upended by Florida just a little earlier this evening. That tips at 8.30 Eastern, also available on the ESPN app. They got upended by a shorthanded Florida team, and Rick Barnes was not happy. So Al uh, LSU is not alone in the... Uh, look in the mirror teams tomorrow morning and goodness oh, gracious yes. they're gonna have to I'm not sure you don't burn the tape on this one I, I go back and forth on that of hey you got to force your team to watch every breakdown but then something like this you got to worry about the mental confidence and, and how you can turn the page because these two will meet again in a couple weeks yes they will in two weeks they face one another again Thomas can get the conventional three-point play in a moment Quinterly, 6 of 7. Primo, 6 of 7. Petty has 8 triples. Dane, they set the, of course, program and then SEC record a year ago.
Alabama did by hitting 22 against Auburn. That was on 59 attempts. Today, a little better percentage. And they lost 68 that game, right? percent from deep. You're right. Yeah, so a little bit more celebratory fashion available this game. Yeah, as our producer says, they'd have to go one for 28 to match that. So from here on out. But uh, yeah, and just last game, you and I, you and I had over the weekend when Johnny John Petty became the program record holder when he broke the 263 mark. And that is now counting, but uh, you know, with the shooters, Nate Oates is going to bring in here. I think there's going to be plenty of people sweating any three-point records. I, I trust our producer Eric Bozeman. I don't trust him uh, that Alabama will go one of 28 the rest of the way. So this is what the bracketology looks like inside the SEC. Alabama is about to go to seven and zero, and it would have, in essence, a three-game advantage over its closest foes. That's LSU and Tennessee, who would. Both have two losses at the end of the evening. The, the, the team that certainly can't be on there, they've only played six games, but yeah, I like South Carolina. I wish they could have an opportunity to build more of a resume. They've had disruption after disruption, and they came down here and played this LSU team extremely close without Coach Frank Martin on the sidelines as he's had his second battle with COVID. Uh, but if the Gamecocks can ever get into any sort of routine, see if they can't come on hot and build a case for themselves. And we wish Frank the best to another speedy recovery so outside of south carolina i mean what's the other team in the sec that you may put a little stock into if you will outside of the top half that we saw well i know auburn does not have the resume yet but now that they have sharif cooper they're going to be messing up a lot of other teams resumes auburn with a self-imposed band but they're they're going to be out there messing up a lot of other teams so uh they're you know, they're much better than their record shows. Um, you know, can, can can Arkansas figure it out? You know, because they're, they're reeling a little bit. But right now, Arkansas has got to look and say, golly, we're not the only team that Alabama has just abused. And maybe that helps give them a little bit of a little bit of confidence to uh, move on. Kentucky trying to get back in the wing column as well tomorrow. It is on the road against Georgia. You know, Mississippi State, uh, if they had not, they, they dropped a, a game to Texas A&M last time out. But Mississippi State, Iris Molinar, DJ Stewart, two of the most talented scorers you can find in a backcourt. Uh, another dangerous team in the SEC. It's Rojas, Ellis Shackelford, Quinterly. And then Darius Miles now into the game for Alabama. Get Shaq is for a wizard on the baseline. This is Miles. Uh, there's still nine minutes left, and Alabama is a point away from 90. That's uh, what is that? Four blue collar points for Jaden Shackleford. Yeah, that's a four-piece right there. You get the charge, man. <laughs> yeah, feeling good about yourself. Way to move your feet, Jaden Shackleford. But th this is what makes them so tough. It's not just about the mismatches they create on the offensive end. It's the defensive end. When you can have your guards guarding other bigs that can move their feet so well, it's just the speed and energy Alabama plays with. Keon Ambrose Hilton with his first basket a little less emphatic than the one we saw a few days ago. And Kevin, don't forget, uh, this is Alabama team that, to me, is missing one of their key pieces, Jordan Brewer. Yeah. Uh, I, I shouldn't have tried Ambrose Hilton there or tried to doubt his Sports Center top 10 play abilities. He did land there a few days ago after a dunk against Arkansas. Here he's smart. That's good. Yeah, okay, I'll go back to, to Bruno for a second. Funny story. You heard the same one on the, the Goodman and Hummel podcast, but, you know, Coach Saban's talking to Coach Oates. They're catching up and asking about the injury, and Coach Oates says, yeah, meniscus, he's out four to six weeks, and Saban says, four to six? They get my guys back in two to three. <laughs> so a little pressure on the basketball training staff <laughs> to keep up with, uh, with the legend's expectations. I'd say Bruner's going to be back sooner than expected now that I've heard that. 
That's three-pointer number 22. I, I've run out of descriptions. Alabama 61% from deep. And this is eye-popping. They just tied the SEC record, which is obviously a program record to boot. And with 7.25 to go, Dan, they are six away from the NCAA record. Darius Miles, get behind that three-point line. Forty-point lead. So, Dane, they do it again. They yeah. Not much else to do except try to break records. Miles getting in the mix, and they're Bruner, happy for his teammates. Who is the best player in the ACC? Villanova up nine against Seton Hall, Illinois, cruising after back-to-back -back L's in the Big Ten. Kevin, Dane, back to you. Maybe we'll see some history. Six more threes. Fellas, 96 and counting for Alabama. And Eric Gaines, his effort in vain. Seven minutes to go, and, and Dane, you said it. It's kind of just record watch time. Great effort there from the freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. Nice the block, and threw it away. Alabama playing its second game, by the way, without its starting five-man, Jordan Bruner, who Nate Oates has described as he's been like the best teammate you could possibly ask for on the bench these last couple of games. Suffered the meniscus injury on his, uh, in his right knee against Kentucky last week. So, as Dan, you alluded to, the initial forecast is he would be out four to six weeks. Nick Saban that pressure aside. <laughs> that was before Dr. Saban diagnosed him. It's miles off the window. Alabama approaching 100. I mean, Dan, it's, it's been like this since the opening minutes. I said it before, Alabama went up by double digits less than three and a half minutes into the game. Kevin, this point is, uh, went to 20, to 30. It's 42 right now. It's a complete 180 from a game you and I had last year where it was a record watch when Vanderbilt's three-point streak after, you know, <laughs> decades and decades was coming to an end. And their home crowd knew it was about to come to an end. It was a blowout. And they were booing their own players when they'd shoot a two, and they couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. And they didn't realize really till the end of the game that the fans were cheering for them to make a three so they could extend the record at least. But uh, this is... This is a different level of entertainment in a positive way in a blowout. Meanwhile, yeah, Alabama has 22 today. One I've never seen anything against. like that, though. The, the players were so confused. They were getting booed by their own team after they scored, like, a good basket in the paint. <laughs> what the heck's going on? Worst home court advantage ever. So the lineup this weekend, NBA Friday doubleheader gets it going. Celtics Sixers at 7.30. Duke takes on Louisville. That's our Saturday primetime game at 4. And then later that evening on the plus, Aurier McGregor 2. UFC 257. All right. This game at times, remember the, the Rocky 4 gift? Of his of Apollo Creed's trainer going, you know, throw the towel. This one has felt like that. So Neal at the free throw line, and Watford is going to head back to strike and picking up the offensive board. Okay, what does we Will Wade about do in the, in yeah. the next few days? Yeah, we had this conversation with Eric Musselman about a week ago after they had a bad loss, and it was, you know, do you do you burn the tape or do you make your team watch and learn from it and 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 have a very difficult practice because you do have to keep in mind the, the legs for the next game and like I said, the, the mental confidence as well. And so, you know, if I'm Coach Wade at this point, I'm saying, all right, look, we'll revisit this to a degree next time we play Alabama, but let's get back in the lab and f focus on ourselves. What's our problem defensively as a whole and focus on the next opponent as opposed to dwelling on this too long because, you know, the, the message has clearly been sent by Alabama. Coach Wade doesn't need to send it anymore. Alabama started this game by hitting eight of its first nine threes. I, you know, the score is not entirely indicative of what LSU is capable of this year. 
This is a team that I would still bet on being at the top of the SEC standings when we reach early March. Tonight, different story. Miles gave it away. That shot blocked. That, that was Kendall away. Wall a yeah. moment ago with the block on the drive. I'm not sure they didn't tee up Will Wade. He's been barking at the officials there. Yep. I think they got him. Ellis going to the line. I'm not sure you could deploy the ejection fire up your team strategy at this point in the game. Uh, even if you consulted with Coach Calipari and say, uh, I want to I do it at this point. <laughs> yeah, timing is everything. And Alabama's a point away from 100. And what makes this so Arkansas surprising? A few days ago. Oops, yeah, I mean, me. this, ahead, again, for, for our viewers that are sitting here with saying, what the heck? I mean, LSU is a good team, and Will Wade has his team prepared as good as any coach in the SEC. So for Alabama to just have this wire-to-wire -wire in control, you know, yeah, John Petty got him started and never looked back, but you know, an entire team effort that controlled every single facet of the game. Watford step back three. Rattled in and out. Alabama still one off, breaking its own record. The next three, and the tide will reset the SEC record. Wise move from Ambrose Hilton. They are not yet at a Nate Oates era high. The Tide scored 105 last year against Georgia. O'Neal with some solid defense. Pokes it away. On the break, Jalen Cook. Head fake. Score it. Give him one more. To the freshman from right down the road in Walker, Louisiana. That's a chance for one more. Dane, I said this to you, I think, in one of our breaks earlier. You know, all eyes have been on Alabama, especially the last week. They just entered the top 25 for the first time in a couple of years. Now, that was a cameo. This is their highest ranking in nine years. Now, talk about acing the interview. And your first game as a ranked team this year, you beat number two in the league, or soon to beat the second-best team in the league in terms of record. And by an ocean. Nate Oates called the win at Tennessee the biggest win he's had since he's been at Alabama. That's true. But to me, there's no question this is the most convincing win this Alabama team has had under Coach Nate Oates. They haven't played in 27 days. Duke, you see, now down five against Pitt. Jalen Johnson, the freshman, has been ridiculous. 21, 13, and 6. That's on ESPN right now. Kevin, Dane, back to you. Dallin, we march towards the finish of this one. Alabama knocking on the door of triple digits. 22 threes made, 99 points. And, Dane, they're a few minutes away. From improving to 7 and 0. Now, their win streak would be stretched to eight straight. The longest since before you put a Tennessee jersey on. It would be their longest win streak in 18 years. Uh, and you know, like a lot of SEC programs, the, the fan base may have been a little bit dormant, you know, kind of a sleeping giant, if you will. And that's what attracted Will Wade to LSU and Nate Oates to Alabama and a lot of SEC schools where 
the passion for basketball is there, but the product on the court just has not been good enough to come support it on a consistent basis. But now that Nate Oates has this program where it is, under normal conditions without a pandemic, it'd be sellout after sellout. And, you know, I think you're, you're seeing some of that with, with the number of road wins that in the SEC and these blowouts. We talked about this with a number of coaches across the league. Is when you lose some of that energy from the fans, uh, I think it's, it's a benefit to the traveling team. And right now, this LSU fan, fan or LSU team sure could have used the energy from the fans. Give Kendall Wall a chance for one more. And one. The fifth year senior from Columbia, South Carolina. This is just stunning. 101 for Alabama. Cam Thomas hasn't played poorly. The nation's top scoring freshman. But he and many of his teammates just didn't have a chance. Alabama went ahead by double digits three and a half minutes into the game. That lead was 20. Not long after that point. 28 point advantage at half. But Kevin, you gotta get you gotta get Thomas and Watford out of the game soon, right? I mean, there's nothing to gain here. Uh, I'd empty the bench if I will wait. Remember on Thursday, we've got the rivalry matchup out in the Pac-12 Arizona and Arizona State meeting at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Of course, Dave Pash and Phil Walton on the call. And those two teams will meet again the following Monday as well. Now, Nate Oates was Bobby Hurley's understudy at Buffalo. It's a fascinating story how Nate broke into the business. One of his players at... Romulus High in Detroit was being recruited by Bobby to go play and, uh, and and Bobby's brother of course Danny Hurley when he was coaching at Rhode Island he made a great impression on the Hurleys and a couple of years later Bobby offered him an assistant coaching position well there's the record Alabama just broke its own SEC record 23 threes made in a game. They hit 22 against Auburn last season, and they re-break their own record. Let it be the freshman Darius Miles, a little flare screen from deep out of the D.C. area. 23 tray balls. And honestly, I think they could have had 30 if they if they would have not called the dogs off. Uh, they could have they could easily gone 30 for 50. This is what's astounding, though. 23 out of 39 is 59 percent from deep. Josh Gray heading to the line. So at the end of every practice, Dane, Nate Oates has his players take, or pardon me, I should say, there are mandated to make 83 pointers in a five minute window. If you make 79, they put five more minutes up on the clock, you do it again. Uh, and that is something that every practice ends with. What was it? They, they, uh, the record they've had is 97, I believe. And today he told us they were feeling pretty good. We were talking to him at shoot around, and you heard the horn go off. He goes, uh, "Yeah, we got 92, so we're feeling pretty good. We're just a few off the record." Well, they saved their record-breaking performance for the actual game, not practice. Tyler Barnes can't connect. No. And rebound down to LSU. Parker Edwards with the rebound. Blocking foul. There's Big Shaq's son. Redshirt sophomore. It's good to see him playing. Some medical issues and setbacks that he's had to overcome. 
He's transferred down to LSU. Yes, he wears number 32 for Pops, but also was a huge Kobe fan. You can do the math. 8 plus 24, Kobe's numbers. It's certainly been an uplifting journey for him. That open heart surgery procedure that he had a few years ago. Very scary. He was able to recover, and it is... Just fantastic to see him on the floor. And he's got the rebound. So next for LSU, they got to go to Rupp Arena in a few days. Alabama next base is Mississippi State over the weekend. That'll be another challenge. Although it's all in relative terms after you score 104. To go along with 23 triples. You and Dane were referencing NBA Jam a few times tonight. This says look like an NBA Jam performance. Uh, was this was this a Detroit no, computer assistance would be on? Yeah, you, you, <laughs> the computer assistance is on. You're never getting a blowout like this. But yeah, there, there's a cheat code. I think it was the uh, a Pistons fan that was the originator creator, and they they. And they made the Bulls lose any last second shot against the Pistons, if I'm not mistaken. But this, is, this isn't a conspiracy theory. That was, was that a intentional glitch? No, you can look it up. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's real. Yeah, you, you mentioned that upcoming game against Mississippi State. And, you know, Ben Howland, I'm sure, is not going to allow the pace of play to just be totally controlled by Alabama the way it has been with these other opponents. He, he's going to try to... Make it about the half court set, executing, getting it down low in the paint. See if Molinar and Stewart aren't up to the challenge to carry the load on the perimeter against such a talented, stacked Alabama team. Foul with 33.7 left. I think. This is a performance that we, everyone in and around the college basketball universe, is going to be talking about for the remainder of the season. 23 three-pointers. A new SEC and, of course, Alabama program record. I think this great more. train yeah, continues and, roaring. And this, this, this is more about who Alabama is, not what... LSU isn't and they've got the basketball nation's attention with their ranking and their recent play but this is a statement convincing performance Alabama beat Kentucky by 20 last week Arkansas by 31 over the weekend it leads by 32 today against LSU Back to Ambrose Hilton. He lost the handle. O'Neal fouled on the three. Darius Miles not making any friends after that foul. Not from the broadcast team, his bench. <laughs> Let's put this game in the books and let the tide get on the plane and head back to Tuscaloosa. And Lunardi's latest bracketology released today, Alabama projected three seed. Tennessee lost earlier today to Florida, but it'll of course be at the top of the SEC when, when this season's Done with but will it catch the tide? It is about to go to 7-0 in league play. It's eight game win streak will be the longest in 18 years 105 and an SEC record 23 made triples just an incredible wow. performance by the Crimson Tide. Nate Oates' team is playing with more confidence than any team in the country. Outside of Gonzaga Baylor, they're right up there with them confidence-wise and how well they're playing. John Petty started early, made eight out of ten threes, then took the rest of the night off. What a terrific performance. An impressive 
fashion by Nate Oates and this Crimson Tide team against well, a very good LSU program. You're right, and stick around because we're going to talk to the boss in just a second. Alabama shoots 56% from the field. It almost shot better from deep, 54% from beyond the yard. He is the head man, Nate Oates.